This video demonstrates the use of nested loops and what I'm going to be doing is writing a program that outputs a multiplication table. There's an example on the right here just like in fourth or fifth grade those multiplication tables we had to memorize. Here's how we can automatically make them. So we're going to start by outputting the row. We're going to do the row which is um, one two, three, four, five, six. So let's start with the rows. So we're going to have int row equal to, and we'll say one, because so we're going to start with row one, and we're going to go to row six. So we can do a for loop then. So row equals one, and while row is less than, let's say seven, because six is less than seven, then increment row because each of these rows just increments. One, two, three, four. Yeah, it's just increment of one. And that's what plus plus row is going to do. And now we can output row. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So we first compile and then execute. And we see one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, well that's not the output we're looking for. What we're actually wanting to do is have a new line after each of the row outputs. So let's add a new line like so. Compile, execute. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Just like we have one, two, three, four, five, six. That's a good start. So now we've taken care of rows. So how are we going to get these additional columns added in? Well that's where the nested loops comes into play. So let's create a variable for the columns. We'll call it call. So this is just short for columns and row is I guess short for rows perhaps <laughs> okay so how's the nested loop work well what we need here is another for loop inside and what the inner for loops going to do is it's going to output the remainder of these items so let's see how that works inside of each of the rows we want to output each of these columns so our column will start at one and the column let's say less than seven because if we look along the top here the column goes till six which is less than seven and we increment column because the column just increments just like the rows did and then we can output the column so let's take a look at what happens here compile and execute oh boy we got a lot of output so what's happening? You know, we have two output statements, so we can disambiguate. I'm going to temporarily comment out the row output so we can just see the column output. And what's happening? Okay, it's outputting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then it starts over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then it starts over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and they're all on new lines. So there's a pattern of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, but there's a new line after every number, and that's not what we want what we want is a new line after each of the columns are done. So let's delete this end line and see what happens. Compile, execute. Now we end up with the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 pattern, which by the way is happening six times, but this is all in one row. So let's put a new line here. So after the columns have all outputted, we have a new line. So that way we can get outputs then the next line and then the next row and then the next row and the columns will be separated. Let's take a look. There we go. We're starting to get a format that resembles our multiplication table and that's much better. So what next? Now we need to get the right values to be multiplied together. So at the top left we have one which is the correct output and then we have two, three, four, five, six. So the top row is perfectly fine other than the spacing isn't very good. So let's fix that spacing. That's an easy one. We'll just add a space. Compile and execute. There, the spacing, that's much better. That's easier to look at. Now what is wrong is on the second row, third row, fourth row, those are all off. What are they off by? Let's take a look at the second row. The second row looks like it's off by a factor of two. We should be multiplying by two for the second row. Well, that makes sense. So we've got column which is doing well, but we're not actually multiplying by the row. If we multiply by the row for the second row, then we'd get 
instead of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, which are just the column numbers, we multiply that by row and we're going to get double that because we're on the second row. So let's take a look at what this looks like. Okay, that is looking better. These numbers are right on. The format is a little bit off. And it looks to be off because when we get two digits, then it's taking up more space than when it was a single digit. So the single digits were uniform and look nice, but when we have two digits, it offsets, pushes a little further to the right. So we can do a quick fix. So if it's 10 or more, we'll add an extra space. Does that make sense? If it's 10 or more, so if the column times the row is greater than or equal to 10, then we add an extra space. Does that make sense? Let's see. Compile and execute. Oh no, that looks terrible. I have the logic backwards. If it's less than 10, we need an extra space. Because if it's only like an 8 here, then we should have added an extra space as opposed to adding an extra space when it's actually 10. Yeah. So let's make this less than 10. So if column times row is less than 10, then add a space. Let's take a look at this output. That looks pretty good. All right, now we can change these numbers. Let's do a full 10 by 10 multiplication table. So we'll put 10 here and 10 here. I'm going to save, and compile, execute. And it goes all the way to 9. And then 9 times 9 is 81. Yeah, that looks nice. But it didn't go to 10. And that's because we're using less than. So we're only going less than 10, which is 9 is. So I'm going to make this equal to, because I think that just makes it a little bit easier to read. If it's less than or equal to 10, let's see what happens. There we go. It goes all the way to 10 by 10. Now we could manipulate our column. Let's say our column only went up to 5, but our row still goes up to 10. Let's take a look at that output. So our column only goes up to 5 now, but our row still goes down to 10. So we can completely control the outputs here which is really great. So we could make this an 8 by 8, we could make it a 7 by 8 multiplication table, whatever multiplication table we wanted we can make it just by changing this line of code and this line of code. Okay, thank you.